Hello everyone. So, our new topic is UV protective textile. So, UV radiation protective textiles. In this section, we will discuss the different aspects of UV radiation. Initially, we will try to understand the UV radiation, then we will see the different factors in textile material which can affect the UV transmission performance or how to protect UV radiation and last segment we will discuss about the fabric engineering, how to engineer fabric to control the UV transmission ultraviolet ray transmission. So, first let us try to understand what is ultraviolet radiation. These are basically electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic wave if we classify, if we arrange in terms of wavelength, the wavelength from 10 nanometer to 400 nanometers, they are coming under the UV radiation, UV ray. So, first there will be cosmic ray, then gamma ray, X ray, UV ray and above that it is a visible light, infrared and microwave. So, UV ray can be divided into four categories again depending on the wavelength from 100 to 10 nanometer to 100 nanometer it is called UV D then 100 to 200 nanometer UV C 280 to 320 UV B and 320 to 400 it is UV A ray and depending on the wavelength their penetration through the ozone layer they take place and their severity that is the effect on human life that also effect on the that depends on the, the wavelength. This aspects first we will discuss. So, the energy that wavelength if we see that infrared frequency range from 3 multiplied 10 to the 12 to 4.3 multiplied by 10 to the 14 hertz and UV light frequency range is in this range 7.5 multiplied by 10 to the power 14 to 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 7 hertz. This is the frequency range. So, as I have already mentioned, so that uh, ultraviolet radiation is classified into four categories depending on the uh, wavelength as per biologist UVA, UVB, UVC, UVD, and as per physicist they are classified into near UV, near ultraviolet, middle ultraviolet and vacuum ultraviolet. So, if you talk about the effect on human or any living organism, this classification is based on UVA, UVB, UVC and UVD. So, if you see UVA so ultraviolet ray A which is within the range of 315 to 400 nanometer its energy is 3.1 to 3.94 electron volt. So, energy here it is lowest energy, but wavelength is high as the wavelength 
reduces the energy increases. So, it is a long wavelength it is not absorbed by the ozone layer. So, majority around 90 percent 95 percent it penetrates through the ozone layer, but here the energy is low least UVB it is from 200 nanometer to 350 nanometer it is a medium wave mostly absorbed by the ozone layer here they absorb by the mode ozone layer and its energy is little bit higher than UVA 3.94 to 4.43 and short wave that is UVC 280 to 100 nanometer it is 4.43 to 12.4 electron volt and it is completely absorbed by the ozone layer. So, short wave length UV ray it is they are absorbed and UV D it is much shorter wavelength they are complete they completely absorb they do not come, uh, come to the earth. So, if you see here the 5 percent is absorbed in UVA by the ozone layer. So, 5 percent of the energy is being absorbed in the ozone layer for UVA, but 95 percent reaches to the earth surface. So, we should be careful about UVA because majority of the rays are coming to the earth surface. UVB is 95 percent is absorbed very little comes to the earth, but here energy is high higher than UVA and that is why it is more dangerous than UVA and UVC it is almost 100 percent absorbed. So, why do you need UV protection? It is basically it affects the human and aquatic ecosystem even plants. So, on human it is skin cancer, eye cataract, immune suppression these are the effects. So, effect it effects on plant environmental effect is there there are effects on material. So, UV ray it affects the synthetic fiber particularly nylon and even polypropylene they get affected easily and reduce the mechanical characteristics and or other characteristics. So, protection against solar UV radiation maximum between 10 to 14 hours. So, one should avoid direct sun from 10 to 14 hours other ways of protection like environment and legislation change creation and popularization of global UV index by WHO. So, so, global UV index people must know and depending on the UV index one should use UV protection may be UV protective clothing or different shades one can use. Change in environment by provision of shade or other UV radiation protective structure depending on the UV index. Personal protection also is required using sunscreen, umbrella, hat or sun protective clothing when people are going out. So, in our discussion we will try to see how to develop UV ray protective clothing. The most commonly used terms are ultraviolet protection factor UPF is the most commonly used term to show the level of protection by 
a fabric or any material. So, this is assigning a degree of UV radiation protection of a fabric, the its inverse of UPF is that erythema weighted transmittance EWT. So, it is the UPF equal to 1 by EWT and sun protection factor SPF it is mainly used for sunglass or sometime for clothing SPF also we can use. UV index is another term which are used for daily weather forecasting. UV index is basically it is environmental term it shows how much UV radiation is coming to the earth surface in that particular area. UV index depends on the altitude of the particular place and clouds in that zone. So, if it is cloudy this will the UV index of that particular zone will reduce and vice versa. EPF eye protection factor it is mainly used for sunglass. So, there are different terms we must know UPF, EWT, SPF, UV index and EPF. First let us try to understand the UPF ultraviolet protection factor. This is the ratio of average effective UV radiation irradiance transmitted and calculated through air and that radiation to the average effective UV radiation calculated through the fabric. Now, let us see this is fabric and here there is no fabric it is a through air. Now, suppose UV radiation is coming UV radiation here also UV radiation. Now, here with the fabric so without fabric with through air it is coming E D and through fabric fabric will absorb little bit UV ray and it will say E D fabric. E D is more than E D fabric that that is energy coming through the fabric. So, here the energy UV radiation energy it is more. So, this will be more so U P F will be E D by E D F which is more than 1. That means, higher protection, higher absorption by the fabric means the if the absorption is high that means, the amount of energy transmitted through fabric will be low. So, where that is why if it is low, so if it is low reduced then UPF will increase. So, fabric protection will increase. So, higher protection of fabric means higher UPF. So, effective dose of the UV radiation it is ED through air or effective dose which is coming out from fabric after absorption by the fabric it is EDF. So, UPF is equal to ED by EDF I have already explained and E W T which is reciprocal of U P F. So, that we can also derive. Now, the ranges are the U P F range if it is 40 to 50 it is excellent protection where only less than 2.5 percent transmission will the U V ray will get transmitted through the fabric 
rest 97.5 percent or more will be absorbed. So, these are excellent anything more than 40 UPF is excellent. So, if we have rating 40, 45, 50, 50 plus like that, 50 plus is very good U, uh, ultraviolet protection rate, 25 to 39 it is a very good protection where 4.1 to 2.6 percent of radiation is getting transmitted. So, 25, 30, 35 in this way we express the UPF and 15 to 24 is good protection and below that it is a poor protection. So, 15 to 24 means typically 6.7 to 4.2 percent are getting transmitted. Next is the sun protection factor, these are basically used for any sun protective lotion and sometime for fabrics. Sun protection factor is actually it is a ratio of dose to produce minimal sunburn under fabric cover or maybe sun lotion cover to the skin to the radiation dose to produce the same sunburn of uncovered skin. Now, so this is one skin suppose human skin. Here we are protecting through one cloth, another human it is without any protection. Now we will keep on increasing the radiation rate. Here, up certain time after certain time, mean dose, mean effective dose without any cloth is MED, and mean effective dose with protective surface is this one. Now, here with mean effective dose certain mean effective dose there will be a sunburn after certain time, but here if we want to have similar sunburn after protection we need to increase the mean effective dose. So, mean effective dose here more than those without surface unprotected surface. So, this is so that is why sun protection factor SPF which is more than 1 is equal to this one is more. So, ME day protective surface by unprotective skin. So, this is a protective skin, protected skin and unprotected skin. The ratio here shows the sun protection factor. The main difference from the earlier one UPF we do not need any human object, but to measure sun protection factor we need human object and this SPF is very important for sun protective lotion where we have to use our body part and apply the, the lotion on the body part and after that we try to see any sunburn. So, MED PS is minimum erythemal dose of protective protected skin PS that is may be by fabric protection or by any lotion protection and very minimum erythemal dose of unprotected skin 
M A D E U S that is without any protection. So, M E D is defined as minimum quantity of radiant energy that is it is U V B dose here we normally use U V B dose required to produce fast detectable readiness of the skin and its time is 22 plus minus 2 hours exposure. So, that exposure will be in continuous manner and then we will measure the skin readiness. So, skin will get red. So, when as soon as the skin reddening will happen then we will start we will stop the our experiment and we will keep on change if the skin reddening is not happening then we will go to the next level of dose in this way we will do experiment and ultimately we will calculate the SPF. SPF measurement is basically time consuming measurement whereas, UPF we can get immediate result. Now, try to understand UV index for all this study of UV protection we must know the UV index of that particular environment. So, without UV index only developing UV protective clothing will not help. We need UV protective clothing where UV index is very high. In case of low UV index we have to produce fabric accordingly. UV index is an international standard which measure the strength of UV radiation from the sun at a particular place at a particular time. So, that is important UV index changes with the place altitude many other factors are there. So, this index is actually open ended linear scale that means, it is directly proportional to the intensity of UV radiation that cause sunburn to human skin which means that we can extrapolate. For example, if an individual without sunscreen begins to sunburn in 30 minutes with UV index of 6 then we can predict that same person will have the same effect of sunburn in 15 minutes with a double intensity of UV index of 12. If the UV index becomes say 3 then he may take 1 hour time to have similar sunburn. So, that is why it is called it works on linear fashion. So, UV index represents the maximum effective radiance received on the skin surface taking into account cloud cover and all other variables of the environment. So, we must know the UV index and that is the maximum radiance which is reaching on our skin and this radiance UV index is it is a combination of UV A, UV B, UV C everything if you take care whichever it is coming accordingly and giving the weightage of different ray that I will explain just now and then we calculate the UV index and it is obtained by multiplication of the effective radiance of the solar radiation by 0 0.04, but typically if you see it is uh, we if we multiply by 0 0.04 that means we have to divide by 25 basically whatever the UV radiation comes and if we multiply with the weightage and then we if we divide and why do we divide by 25 just to have one stand one value with the within a scale of 1 to 11 11 or 1 to 15 that particular value if we want to get that is why we multi divide by 25 otherwise it will the value will be very high that is the standard we can also use total uh, radiation coming into the body, but to have the scale 
from 1 to 11 or 1 to 15 in that scale we have to divide by 25. Now, if we see the UV index 1 to 2 UV index it is a weak UV index weak. So, it will not be that much harmful. So, continuous exposure of 1 to 2 hours 2 to 3 hours is we can have that continuous exposure without any effect. UV index 3 to 4 means moderate where exposure of 30 minutes to 1 and a half hour. So, 1 hour 30 minutes that is possible 5 to 6 it is a strong. So, exposure of 25 to 50 minutes and 7 to 8 it is very strong continuous exposure of 20 to 40 minutes duration where sunburn can occur. Okay. So, this time during this time if it exceeds then sunburn will occur otherwise without any protection we can have this. So, before we go into the sun if we know the UV index then we can use our protection accordingly. So, anything above say 8 these are dangerous as I have mentioned UPF is basically without any human object it is in vitro measurement where it is a ratio of ultraviolet ray coming this is without any protection in air and this is through the material protective clothing or any sun protection lotion we can calculate the UPF and one thing we should mention here this are the, the energy and wavelength, but this multiplication here it is E lambda is relative erythermal spectral effectiveness S lambda solar spectral irradiance and delta lambda measured wavelength interval in nanometer. So, here if we see lambda ranging from 280 to 400 these are the ranges which are coming through the ozone layer. SPF measurement needs the human object because we have to see the, the skin readiness generally used to determine the SPF of sunscreen requires human subject based on minimal erythermal dose MED. So, radiation dose to produce just perceptible erythermal under fabric cover or any other sunscreen cover and divided by the radiation dose to produce just perceptible erythema of uncovered skin. So, for at certain time did this radiation we dose we change and then we measure the, the dose intensity. Now, coming to the calculation of UV index this is a standard method followed internationally to know the UV index. So, if we listen that it is a UV index for a particular city is set 5. So, what does it mean? So, when calculating how strong the UV radiation is in a particular place scientists only focus on the range of wavelength between 290 nanometer to 400 nanometer since this range of UV passes through the ozone layer. The range of ozone layers those who are which are absorbed those are not taken into account because those are not reaching to the environment. Now, the strengths are arbitrarily given for different wavelength of UV. So, 290, 320, 400 we can subdivide also and strength is 5, 25 and 50. The stronger the shorter wavelength 
are absorbed by ozone more than the longer. So, their strength near the earth surface is weaker. So, depending on the wavelength, so these are absorbed by ozone layer maximum 290 nanometer wavelength. So, that is why their strength arbitrarily given lower, whereas longer wavelength they reach to the earth surface maximum. So, that is why their strength is given higher. So, this is the strength is based on the, the absorption of this uh, UV rays in by the ozone layer. These values what we have seen earlier 5, 25, 30, these are hypothetical value and may not be exactly identical to how different agencies calculate UV index. So, different agencies are there to calculate UV, inje, UV index. So, different agencies they may give slightly different value, but having the strength weighted with the smaller value for shorter wavelength is accurate, because shorter wavelength reaches uh, minimum quantity to the earth, because they are maximum absorbed by the ozone layer. So, for any calculation if the values hypothetical values are different, but their trend will be same and then the third column added which is given weightage. Here if we see the weightage are just reversed to that of strength 290 nanometer the strength was 5 because its amount proportion reaching towards earth after absorption was 5, but weightage shows the its severity on the human health or any other matter. Lower wavelength is more harmful than the higher wavelength. So, as the wavelength increases this weightage, this weightage is depending on the, the harmfulness. So, these are 29 nanometer, so 290 nanometer wavelength are very harmful that is why they are given higher weightage. So, scientists found that shorter wavelengths are more dangerous okay, because they have got higher energy. So, shorter wavelength with higher energy are more dangerous towards human health. To include this and this shorter wavelength also affects the material at higher rate. To include this information in calculation weighting the UV strength at different wavelength is required. So, that is why it has been weighted. So, weight of wavelengths is opposite fashion as the strength of the values given earlier. Okay. Shorter wavelengths have a higher weight because they are more dangerous, but lower strength factor since they are absorbed more by ozone layers. These values are theoretical and they are weighted and accurate fashion by different agencies. Then what we have to do? We have to multiply the strength with the weight. So, we get result 85 for 290 nanometer, 175 for 320 nanometers and 400 for 70 nanometers. So, this result is a, a combination of amount and its effect on human health or any effect on any material. So, it is a quantity and the energy multiplication after doing so what we have to do we have to add to get the total radiation. So, multiply the strength of UV by weight and the result will be UV radiations direct strength at the corresponding wavelength. So, this result is 
direct strength of the UV. So, 85 is the direct strength of UV of 290 nanometer and after that what we get? So, we have to add the, the results, the strength of UV at each wavelength from 290 to 400 nanometer is summed up to represent the overall impact of UV radiation has on the human skin. So, what we get? We get if we add we will get 330 is a value, then the 330 value if we divide this 330 with 25, then we will get the UV index for that particular place. So, before doing that what we do? We can take into account two aspects, one is the altitude aspect, another is the cloud cover that if we want to incorporate that we do, otherwise we can directly divide by 25. How the clouds and elevation interferes? So, it has been determined that for each kilometer above the sea level, there will be 6 percent increase in magnitude of UV. So, if it is 1 kilometer above the sea, it will be 6 percent increase that means, that we have to add 0 0.06 for every kilometer. It is also known that UV radiation is absorbed by clouds okay, with which reduces the intensity of UV ray which is coming towards earth. According to environmental protection energy, there are they have different standards. When there is no cloud, there will be 100 percent UV ray coming to the earth surface which is coming through the ozone layer. So, there is no restriction or reduction, but for spotty clouds there will be 89 percent transmission and completely overcast sky there will be 31 percent reduction, then the 30 odd percent will reach and typically that 69 percent will be absorbed there. So, if you take these two aspects of elevation and cloud interference, we can readjust our the data. So, let us choose a elevation of 5 kilometer with scattered cloud. So, if we try to see the UV index for a particular place which is say for example, 5 kilometer above the sea level and it is scattered clouds are there. So, to take the 5 kilometer that means, 6 percent for each kilometer the true effect of UV would have been have to be adjusted 30 percent increase in elevation for the elevation. So, 6 percent increase in every kilometer. So, there will be 30 percent total increase in UV ray at that location and 89 percent of that because of the scattered clouds. So, if you take both these two aspects into consideration, the calculation will be 330 which we have got earlier 1.30 that means, 30 percent increase due to the elevation 5 kilometer elevation and 0.89 means due to scattered cloud. So, it is coming out to be 381.81 and this 381.81 if we divide by 25 we will get 15.27 with a round off it will be 15. So, at that particular place the UV index will be 15 because this to have a whole number okay, which is we can uh, compare and 0 UV index means there is no UV ray and as we UV index increases there will be more and more UV ray coming from the sun. So, increase in UV index that means, increase in risk. Okay. So, UV index 0 to 2. 
So, what are the protection required for different UV index of environment? So, 0 to 2, so for that it is a lower threat, lower risk, so cover head and or eyes. So, just by covering head or eyes we can be protected, we can cover by cap 3 to 5, we have to cover head eyes and we have to use low SPF sunscreen, we do not need any other protection, low sun protection factor sunscreen is enough, 6 to 7 we have to cover head eyes body and we have to use strong SPF sun protection, uh, protection factor that sunscreen we have to use and we should not spend long time for in outdoor 8 to 10 which is very strong we have to cover head eyes body and use strong SPF or do not spend time in outdoor and we have to take sufficient protective measure. So, we can use clothing with UV protection higher UV UPF. So, UV protective clothing we must use during this and above 11 we should not go out because it is extremely dangerous. Okay. So, accordingly we can select clothing our protection. So, ab anything above 3 we should use our protective clothing. There are different standards available. So, European standard EN 13758 that is there are variants. So, 1, 2. So, Australian standard AATCC, ASTM. So, different standards available to measure the UV protection in clothing. Now, we will discuss the effects of various textile parameters on ultraviolet ray protection. These factors are material related factor, we can use different materials for making textile for UV protection. So, if we see UPF of cotton viscous and linen, this fibers give lower UPF than the synthetic fibers like nylon and polyester, wool also wool and silk the this protein fibers they give higher UPF than the cellulosic fibers, polyester provides usually high UPF. So, in terms of material selection as far as UPF is concerned, so UV protective textile is concerned we must use this type of clothing. So, if polyester is preferable here, if we want to use cotton or viscous we must use extra UP ultraviolet protective finish we can use, porosity, aerial density and thickness are also important. So, we can change the porosity of yarn and fabrics. So, with the increase in the porosity the UPF decreases. So, if we increase the porosity that means, the fabric become porous. So, through that the ultraviolet ray will pass. So, UPF increases with the decrease in porosity and increasing fabric weight and thickness. So, as the fabric thickness increases or fabric mass per unit area increases, it will protect the UV ray. More thickness or higher weight means there will be more number of fibers coming into protect the UV transmission. Fabric dyed with dark color gives higher UPF value. If we use UV absorber as finish material that will increase the UPF value. When we stretch the fabric that is that means, its pore size will increase 
and through which the ultraviolet ray can penetrate. So, UPF decreases. So, UPF decreases under stress condition. So, stretchability of fabric we have to see for say knitted fabric under stretch condition it reduces the UPF value with the wetness UPF decreases when cotton becomes wet. So, through wet cloth ultraviolet ray can pass through easily washing increases the UPF. It means during laundering what happens the fabric get actually that shrinkage occurs shrinkage in fabric occurs. So, effective the pores effective pores between the yarn reduces due to shrinkage. So, that effectively increase the UPF value here we can see number of laundering cycle here if we increase the laundering cycle the UPF value increases. So, UPF of clothing gets modified during laundering process most fabric shrink after laundering and thus open area of fabric reduces which in turn improves UPF value. There are various factors basically the factors are raw materials that we have discussed yarn related factors we have discussed this yarn related factors are there like type of yarn yarn twist. So, they affect the UPF and fabric related parameter fabric geometry there are two types of effects one primary effect primary effects are based on weave structure yarn count and thread density. So, different weave gives different type of that UV radiation UV protection yarn, yarn count so, finer count keeping everything constant using finer yarn count means more open area. So, that will allow more and more this UV ray to pass through and thread density if we want to prevent the UV ray to pass through. So, we must use the compact thread density the closer thread density. So, thread density should be high and depending on the weave yarn count and thread density there are secondary factors which are dependent on the primary factors like fabric cover factor they are dependent on mainly yarn count and thread density fabric porosity fabric mass per unit area fabric thickness depending on the yarn count mass per unit area again yarn count and thread density and yarn cream yarn count thread density and weave pattern. So, all these factors directly or indirectly affect the UV protective performance of textile material. So, in the next class we will discuss all these factors in detail like raw material related factor parameters of yarn, parameters of fabric geometry and technological parameters in detail. So, till then thank you.